Good afternoon, everyone, to today's coffee lecture on rebooting your Scholar, uh, Google Scholar searches. So why rebooting? Why do we need to revisit a tool that we use quite frequently and feel very familiar with? And so the aim for today is to kind of foster uh, a dialogue around this tool and see if there's any um, insight that we can gather as I'm presenting um, some of the features from my experience. So for today, what are we covering? We're going to examine, or for some of you, re-examine some of the Google Scholar key features. Um, we will explore some tools that could help um, enhance this experience. Um, such as extensions or other tools. And I will show some illustrations on some techniques that you can apply to the Google Scholar queries. Keep in mind that we can't cover all of the possibilities. And so this is where um, in the discussion, we can kind of delve in a little deeper. We do hope that we can offer some new considerations for your Google Scholar searches. Also, it may even help validate your current approach. So if what I cover today, you feel like you have considered, then that could be um, a still a positive thing. And I think with any tool that we're using, it's always good to reflect and take a step back and look at things with fresh eyes. We don't wanna take things for granted and we know that tools can change. And sometimes there might be subtle changes along the way. So I think this is also important why we want to bring up Google Scholar. So just that we're on the same page about Google Scholar, Google Scholar is a search engine that was released in November 18th, 2004. And behind Google Scholar, right, it was the idea where people can search for scholarly works, right? So book chapters, journal, publications, presentations, patents in the main search box, right? There is a 256 character limit. This might be something to consider if you're doing something very extensive. And of course, you can find a wide range of scholarly works across various disciplines. Um, and in addition to searching, there are other features, right, where you can explore related works, citations, and also author uh, scholarly profiles. And so here we're going to delve in on some quick tips um, in no particular order. So I think one thing that we don't realize is that we can customize um, our experience a little bit by the settings. And so if you're an avid Google Scholar um, user, um, you can personalize it even further, right? You would have to log in to your Google account and then of course go through the different setting options. And so here, for example, you can specify the content that you want to be retrieved, the results, if you want each individual result to be open in a different um, tab or window. And then also if you want to show the import citation options. And for some of you, right, when you're organizing your literature, you probably want that readily available. For those of you that are searching for materials, um, one tip could be to make sure that you um, have that library link. So the University of Bern, of course, has access to journal publications, books, and book chapters. And if you're going to Google Scholar as the first step, you want to ensure that you have that library link from the University of Bern so that you see it available when you're on the network and easily access the PDF of that material. And so here is an example of searching for a book chapter which I went directly to Google Scholar. And here you would see the Univea full text, and then it will then prompt you to the actual text of this book. With Google Scholar, there are two main search options. So the main basic option, right, that's what you see when you first go. And then of course, there is the advanced search option. So um, I will touch based on both of these. I do have to say that the first option, what we would consider basic, there are ways that you can optimize to make a more robust search, but we will touch on this when we discuss um, syntax. But for the advanced search option, I think this could be useful, especially if you're struggling 
when you're doing Google Scholar searches. And so this might help a user to be even more precise, right? Because it's a bit guided. It has all of the particular search fields that you can input. Um, this is also can be helpful if you're looking for a particular reference. Another tip could be to search profiles. So how could this be helpful? So many researchers, scholars, they like to have and showcase all of their works. Um, and that could be useful, right, for your H index. But for someone who is searching, or maybe if you're new to a topic, actually searching profiles could give you a good introduction and connect you to experts in the field. So you could start with a very simple search, and then in the Google, uh, Google Scholar option, you would then click on profiles and it would take you to their list of publications. And that could also be a good starting point when you're trying to explore a topic. And then of course, um, cited works, right? This can be another way to identify more literature, right? If you're doing a really simple search, you can see what other works have cited this work. And the other layer to this is that you can even search within those citations. Um, and so it's just a nice um, way, segue um, to look for other types of literature. And in addition to that, aside from seeing the cited works, you can also see what is related from the first um, publication that you clicked on. And again, this is another idea, right, when you're trying to find additional work. And then of course, in Google Scholar, you can cite and export. So again, going back to your settings, be sure that you have that. So that way, if you have EndNote or Mendeley or some type of citation management tool that you can then easily select or individually select those publications that you want to look at later and export them. Now, when it comes to um, exporting in bulk, there is a tool that I will be talking about later. But I think that if you're doing um, a literature review, um, something maybe a, on a smaller scale, of course, in your Google Scholar results, right, you can individually pick what would be potentially relevant. But if you're doing, for example, a systematic review, you might have other considerations to make. And so what are some tools that you can use to kind of complement your Google Scholar search experience? So um, right with the inception of ChatGPT, there is a way that these can work together. So one important thing about searching in Google Scholar are the keywords, right? Um, those terms that you're going to put in the search query. And so do um, use right ChatGPT or Gemini to come up with a precise list of terms um, that you can then include in your Google Scholar search. And then of course, there is a really great extension called the Google Scholar button. So if you're starting your search um, a different way, so let's say you're searching online, maybe on a web page, using the Google Scholar button, right, could then move your query, right, from what you're finding. For example, here in the World Health Organization, I was looking at hypertension using this extension, right, I can then move from here into a Google Scholar search. And speaking of terms, what is important to note is that the order of your search terms are very important. You know, we talk a lot about AI tools being the black box, right? So Google Scholar, I would say, is also fall into this category of black boxes. And so here is just an example of how the order of search terms do impact the kinds of results you'll get in the first few pages. And so we know that behind the scenes, they do some type of ranking, um, but this is not very explicit or transparent. And so as you're figuring out, right, your keywords, make sure that you put them in an order um, because they could impact the kind of results you get. So as I wanna emphasize, right, the order of the search terms will influence the search results. Um, so you do want to place your most essential search terms in the beginning of the query. But I think that in your searching process, right, you can test out a couple of orders and then scan the first page and then kind of determine what has or retrieves the best results. And now we'll dive in a little bit about syntax. So what you're seeing here is not a comprehensive list 
of syntax that you can use um, to optimize your Google Scholar search, but is to, again, generate some uh, ideas, maybe some inspiration of how you can, again, operationalize. And so here are some examples. So this is a more precise search. So if you're not doing, for example, a systematic review, you just want to get a couple of really good articles, you can use some of this syntax to be more precise in your search, right? So all in title, this is a particular syntax, right? Where you're telling Google Scholar only search these terms in the uh, titles of these papers, right? And with the, um, you can also see that the Boolean operators, they're represented by symbols. Because of the character limit, right? You don't want to waste a lot of space. So using this syntax could also be helpful. And so then here is another example. So let's say you wanted to only search a topic in organization websites, right? So then you can use the special syntax, site, you know, and then org, right? Which means organization. And then of course, if you wanted to be even more precise using the all in title and putting things into quotes because this is something that Google Scholar does recognize. Or if you're wanting to make sure you're not retrieving certain results, the not operator is actually represented by a symbol. If you type in not, it's actually not gonna recognize it as a Boolean operator. So in order to remove something you don't want, you would use a dash. So here's an example, Bears, not Chicago. So if many of you might be familiar with American football, right? Chicago Bears, don't want Chicago Bears, but you are interested in Bears, right? You can use this little symbol to make sure that you're not getting those unwanted results. And then of course you can focus it by file type, by site um, and so on. Now, when it comes to systematic reviews, there is a lot of literature as to, do we include it? Do we not include Google Scholar? And so I wanted to touch base on that. So Google Scholar can be considered um, as an information source for systematic review projects. The important thing to note is that it shouldn't be the only source that you search. And so do consult with the current systematic review guidelines. And so when it comes to documenting your search, there are resources that you can refer to, such as the Prisma 2020, as well as the Prisma S. And these complement each other, and this will give you the reporting guidance. Um, but in the meantime, you could create detailed notes and take screenshots of your Google Scholar searches. As far as additional tools to enhance your experience, if you are doing a systematic review and you know that you're gonna have to do bulk importing, there is a software that you can use. This is the Publisher Parish software. And so it's an open source, um, which was led by Anne Dill, um, Hardstein, who is the lead behind this tool. You can search from a variety of sources, you can create projects and save your searches. And it does have the same character limit as if you were searching directly on Google Scholar. But the reason why I'm highlighting this tool is that it offers a seamless bulk export of your Google Scholar results. So if you're doing a search and you wanted to export the first you know, 100 results or 200 or even up to 1,000, I believe is the maximum, right? You can do that through this software. However, if you search it with this tool, of course, there are some features that you won't be able to access, such as the cited by or related documents and some of the syntax, right? Like site, file type, these things will not be recognized in the software. And so here, right, if you install the Publisher Pair software, you would then select your source, which would be Google Scholar. Here is just kind of a workflow, what would happen? You would create the project, you would select the source, and then again, you would just search um, as you were searching in Google Scholar. It does recognize the Boolean operators, right? Those particular symbols that I showed you in the previous examples. And then once you've done your search, right, you can then designate the maximum number of results and then save them and export them into your citation manager or screening software. So Google Scholar can be a great addition to your projects. I say, you know, do take a second look at the tool and see what are things that you can try to, again, get better results. 
And if you are working in a systematic review or scoping review project, please consult with us and we're happy to give you um, any guidance. And if you have any questions, we have a lot of wonderful information on our portal. Or if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation, please feel free to email us.